welcome back to the channel everybody. Today is a great day because we're at Nico Circuit and me and Daiki are testing our comp cars that we've spent the better part of the last four weeks building non-stop with lack of sleep. We're both very excited and cannot wait to see how these things handle. The things we have to do to drive at Nico Circuit. <laughs> Daiki's exhaust unfortunately points out to the left which is as per regulations, but at Nico, we need it to point to the right so that it doesn't get detected by the sound uh, meter thing, the dB meter. So we're putting this little bend thing on here so he can drive. It's our session starting any minute now, so we'll head out and do a few laps, see how this thing feels. I am so stoked to drive this thing. 3.4, man, I cannot wait to feel how this thing handles. I bet you, even though we got 19s and a tire and wheel upgrade, it's gonna still feel gnar. I can just tell. It's gonna be a handful. It's gonna feel great. Also with the rear arms and the adjustable squat and like, uh, what do you call it, active toe. I'm really hyped. Let's see how this thing handles, eh? Take it slow, warm ourselves up, see how we feel. It's time to warm up the car. And as you guys know, we've made a ton of changes to this thing. And I can tell you right off the bat, the moment I took this thing on track, it felt really good. How the car handled and steered, the braking, the new clutch and brake setup we got from Chase Base has really made a big difference on the car. So what I'm trying to do is just get used to the amount of pressure I need to push the pedal with, because that's changed now. And I'm also trying to warm up the front tires, which is means I'm inducing a lot of understeer and braking at the same time to get one, heat into the rotors to soak into the wheels, and also to get some heat into the rubber itself with the understeering and scrubbing off the rubber. I'm gonna also just kind of play around with the throttle a bit, trying to get an idea of how the car's gonna handle. It's the first time I've driven it since new engine drivetrain package, as well as the rear end and the brakes and everything. So I need to make sure everything works. So I do a couple laps just testing everything out, warming up everything, and then we go into my very first lap. definitely a little rusty and I'm still trying to be a little cautious with a fresh build. It's time to head in and make sure that everything's all good. This is a shakedown after all, as much as I just want to keep hot lapping. Um, car makes too much power now, so we can't really even do more than two laps. So this thing has absolutely no business being this responsive and making a thousand horsepower. That is stupid. Also, 850 to 900 is more than enough for here. That's a little sketchy. We'll make do. Um, we'll definitely gotta take a bit of time to get used to everything. I need uh, less air in the back for sure. This track is fun, but it's very slippery in a car that makes this kind of power. <laughs> beyond stoked with this car. I, I know I've said this already a thousand times, but I am beyond happy. I feel incredible, the car feels incredible. I literally just make little adjustments to the coilovers and I feel the difference now. I don't know if the videos will do it justice, but the car handles incredibly. It is way more responsive than it has ever been. 
even with the G35 900 on a 3 liter, which is arguably one of the most responsive turbo setups on a 3 liter 2JZ. This thing has no business being that responsive with the G40, 1150, and the 3.4. I don't even know if I've already said that, but that thing is awesome. Anyways, I wanted to take Ryan in for a passenger lap, but uh, we both got two hours of sleep last night, and I'm pumped full of adrenaline, and he's not. But we gotta wake the boy up. Oh, hi, Yoga Zamas. Your time's up. Good morning. Good morning. We got an hour and a half of sleep last night. Not enough for me, dude. <laughs> you're good, you're good. You slept a couple of hours now. You ready? Yeah. It's your moment. I got one set left and they're for you. Well, you actually have one set left? Yeah. Holy crap. Time, time to jump in the passenger seat, boy. Get your mate outfit on. No, I'm not doing that. <laughs> all right. Are you going to tighten this or are you going to kill me? You'll be all right. Don't forget to close the door before you Dude, I'm not going to lie. I'm not the best passenger out there. How many times do you wreck this car? Uh, none. I haven't wrecked it yet. Oh, really? Oh, okay. That makes me feel a little better. But a thousand horsepower, dude? Come on. I don't think I've ever actually been this much horsepower before drifting. Hell yeah. This will be fun. You'll start in? Um, this is stock. There we go. All right, dude. Let's go. I've never even been on this track. Really? How's the car feel? Right. Yeah? Wait, I got no, no hold on to it, dude. <laughs> Oh, this is gotta do it, boys. It's gotta be great. That tire wall looks a little crazy.
there's a bunch of grip cars here today too because during all of the drifting there's some grip sessions. This S13 is perfect. If I was to build an S13, it would look like that. Look at all the gauges, dude. Isn't that sick? <laughs> There's so many gauges. It's period correct. Is, is there enough things to monitor for all those gauges? <laughs> oh, and then you got the Defi, uh, sorry, not the Defi, the Apexi hand controller too. Very cool. I love that. It's pretty insane. It is. Yeah, there's some cool cars here. Look at this. Little Panda, the 4H. Oh, I love it. Oh, the 8.6s. These cars have come down in price so much recently. Dude, look at the nice 180. Yeah, this one's perfect. Yeah? This, I didn't know you were an NC no, guy. No, oh, 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 the 180. Nah, nah, nah. That's right. You're a big... Uh, this is perfect. You're a big uh, hatch guy now. Yeah, I actually have this. Just red. Red, uh... Similar kit, too. Mine's a little more boxy. You gotta get that thing running. Oh, I know it runs. Oh, it runs? Yeah, the body kit's getting painted right now. Oh, hell yeah. Look at that. That's some mint uh, yeah. colors. Painted green to give it away, baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's clean. Dude. That's clean. A spec S. Not a huge fan of the small wheels. I think that color blue is, is, was that a rare OEM color? I can't remember. I really like this color. Oh, dice. Here comes Dikey, coming in hot. A lot of smoke, he's coming in fast. Oh, baby! The doctor's in the house! Oh, and then he shuts it down. He shuts it down. He shuts it down. Oh, man. Awesome day at Nico Circuit. There's a couple more sessions left. Everyone's out having fun. But I want to beat the traffic home. It's a Sunday, and if we don't get on the road before four, we will be stuck in like four hours of traffic heading back. So I'm gonna leave my car here. Daiki's gonna put it on the double loader with his. Also, how good does Daiki's car look with those uh, RG4s? Mm. Glad that he's able to use those wheels from uh, my J2 seasons. They look good on his car. Daiki though. Yay, amazing day. Car, no problems, right? Yeah. And your hand, your steering doesn't get stuck anymore in buying. Yay. Yay. You know which one? <laughs> Baby, right? Baby. <laughs> you got the there. Ja, gan bate ne. You show the kid the Yeah, he's gonna come first. I'm so excited. I'm gonna do my best to qualify. That's my goal for the weekend. We should. All right, bro. Have fun. Get a couple more laps. I'll see you in the next uh, tomorrow. <laughs> Bye. We're back at the shop now. I had an amazing time driving at Nico. Lack of sleep. But overall, the car was incredible. I was definitely pumping full of adrenaline and it was really good to just go over and feel the differences that every change that we made, made to the car. One of the biggest things that I wanna talk about is actually the Chase Bay's uh, Booster Delete Kit with the Dual Piston Master. This thing has changed so much about the car and the brake feel. Now, first of all, I wanna say very, very clearly, if you like the way a booster feels in your daily car, it's super soft, it's like putting your foot on a cloud, you do you, if that's what you want in your race car, that's fine. But when you're at a competitive, professional level, there is not a single pro car that has a booster. And the reason for that is consistency. Consistency means that when I put my foot on the pedal, if I know that I need to put this much force on it, it needs to be that every single time to stop my car, right? I need to know that if I put this much force with my foot, it's gonna react like this. With a booster, that's impossible. You can never do that. It will always feel different however you touch the pedal. Even if you put a vacuum pump in or anything, it all depends on the vacuum inside the booster and all this stuff. It will never ever be the same feel over and over and over again. So from a driver's perspective, that's very, very bad and you can't get your lap times faster. In a grip scenario, deleting a booster will actually get you overall faster times. Who would have thought? Anyway, so when drifting, and that kind of scenario, same with tandems, like left foot braking, all that type of stuff, as well as just doing a good lead run, being able to use the left foot brake and have your car not bobble and do weird things, which is something I really struggled with over the last few years. So that changed everything. And the pedal feel, honestly, it's not that bad. Yeah, I'm stomping on it, but like, it's really not that bad. Once you get used to it, you have a few moments where you jump back in your daily car and you nearly send yourself through the windshield because you're just not used to a soft pedal. Once you get used to it, it's really not that bad. Compared to 
the single piston one in my street car, this is miles better. All right, so I highly recommend grab this if you want to get into this, you know, some pro braking stuff. So that made a huge change. And I was really able to change how much pressure I was putting on my entry, which controlled how much my car was aggressively flicking, which is really, really cool. Clutch feels incredible. That is amazing. I, I love this so much. Um, turbo. I have no idea why, but this is so responsive. So many people said, no, G40s aren't good. Uh, they're not responsive. I had bad luck with them. But um, I think that comes down to the exhaust manifold setup. I really believe that the Artec manifold is just incredible. And I used a V-Band 8.5, and this is the most responsive thing ever with that Artec manifold. It's incredible. We're also only using a 50 mil gate, which is kind of unheard of in Japan. And we still have smooth, straight boost control. So the Garrett Turbo, the Garrett Gate, working wonders. I think the main reason why it's got so much response and why it's handling so much better than anyone else's experience, it comes down to the Artec manifold. Also, the compression ratio of the engine. HGS's pistons, when they come with the kit, they don't give you an ability of picking between either different compression ratios, you know, like 8.5, 9.5, 10 to one or whatever, right? Um, what, what you actually are supposed to do is just pick a different size gasket. So depending on the thickness of the head gasket will depend on your compression ratio. Normally with a 1.2 millimeter gasket, you're around the eight to eight range. I really wanted to bump this up to nine because we're running E85, that makes the most sense. So what I actually did was when I had the head shaved, um, and machined, I asked Tommy to shave a little bit extra off. Um, it's a little bit of an old school way of raising compression when, it's, when we could just get a set of custom pistons, but I really want to use the HKS kit. And obviously we work with HKS and that was a really good way to get around that. So we bumped this thing up to nine to, I would say it's about nine flat. After my calculations and how much we shaved off, it's probably around nine. So that's obviously gonna help a lot. There's nothing, like, like compression is king in, in uh, engine world we say, and that gives it that really nice punch and also helps with response. That aside though, the rear end is probably the next biggest change we made and holy has that made a difference. We're running 19s, 40, 40 mil sidewall. We've got all this extra meat. Let's go, let me go show you how ridiculous this looks. I'm definitely not one to be known for wheel fitment and no gap, right? Or, or you know, just like crazy sick fitment, credit card fitment, bro. I don't give a crap about that stuff. All I care about is suspension play and movement. Like the car actually doing what it's meant to do in mechanical grip, right? But this is crazy. Look how meaty these are. The 40 sidewall has really changed how this rear end feels, how it kind of like has this initial like, kind of not like a squat, but like a kind of I don't know, just the extra sidewall is awesome. Also, side bite is incredible. These tires feel incredible. Yokohama really did a good job with these. That's made a big difference. The other thing is all the just engineering arms and the anti-squat. The setting we have in is just a little above um, a little above stock. So we have a little bit of active toe. As the car squats, it's adding a little bit of toe and making us faster. I like where it's at right now. I think we're only adding about like 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 10% of, of active toe. There's a few other options that could just go crazy and add an insane amount of toe in when the car squats, which would be probably a little too aggressive. In tandems, it'll kind of mean that you'll start being a little shallow a lot. So um, I think where we're at right now is really, really good, but we'll play around with it when we're driving at Fuji. That aside though, I don't really know what else we changed other than sealing up a bunch of holes that you may have noticed on the GoPro. There's hardly any smoke coming into the cabin now. So much changed on this car and so many things that we fixed. The flywall, firewall doesn't flex anymore. The pedals feel great. Um, I don't know. I don't know what else to really talk about other than everything feels incredible. And the car actually drives like it should have. This car has been so difficult to drive for the last few years. And I know every time we'd make a change, I say, dude, it's so much easier to drive now. But this time, holy, it actually drives itself. It's incredible. The alignment, changing the arms, changing the front caster from five to six made a massive difference. So that aside, I'm hyped. I'm really excited going into this round. Car's never felt this good before. Um, yeah, I'm stoked. A lot of talking just now, but I wanted to go over a bunch of the technical stuff with you so you understand where I'm at and why I'm just in love with this car. Every time I drive it, it really challenges me and makes me a better driver and I learn something. And now that I've built pretty much everything on this thing now, the engine, the rear end, and changed everything and fixed all the alignment stuff and issues, it feels like I understand it even more now, if that makes sense. But I'm still not scared to smash it into a wall. So this year's gonna be great. Thanks for watching guys, like, comment, share, subscribe. If you like this video, go check out this one here. It's a really good one and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.